Good afternoon out there. Today we have another broadcast from Zarelli. Today we have another dance superstar with us who will be explaining a little bit about the background, about the knowledge gathering that she did throughout all these years and how she became as good as she, she became. Uh, with us today is Jana Salenko and Jana is probably the best, one of the best ballerinas of our time. I guess that's a little bit of a, a matter of taste also, but she's for sure one of the best prima ballerinas of our times right now. And she has been gathering a lot of know-how all through the years to be becoming as good as she became. One aspect that's very important to us at Zarelli, we always want to share knowledge. We want to give people opportunity. So if there is girls out there that are very ambitious, that want to go far in their life, and they want to gather as much know-how as they can from great dancers out there, we want to give these people opportunities. And there, Jana is very much on board with us because Jana also herself, she always told us she wishes to share knowledge, she wants to give opportunities to young dancers that are up growing, upcoming, and also she wanted to help people in, in poorer areas of the world, and I think the internet gives a great opportunity to share this know-how nowadays also in areas that in previous years you couldn't, couldn't really get to this know-how. So thank you so much, Jana. You're welcome. And Jana, well, I, I appreciate everything about Jana. Jana is, is a phenomenal dancer, and she, and, and we're gonna take take the young dancers out there step by step through through all these qualities. For us, I think for every dancer, Jana is one of those complete dancers. So she she there's no weak part to her, and so we wanna like explore now step by step all these qualities and the thought process behind and how she became as good as. She she became. And today we want to start with stretching. So how did Jana Salenko become as flexible as she did? Maybe Jana you can start explaining a little bit the stretches that you did when growing up and maybe also share with the audience how many hours a day you would stretch and all these kind of things. Uh, actually I was stuck in uh, this uh, gymnastic and I was uh, seven. So I uh, really hard work to become flexible and uh, gymnastic is always over, over, like stretched. But then I, I was stopped with uh, gymnastic and uh, after one, three years it's uh, uh, gone. And then I fell in love with ballet and it's a completely different work and uh, uh, different stretching. And um, but with the years I, I start to learn how to stretch. Nice. Yes. Uh, so I, I know basic and basic about uh, flexibility, like so flexible. And um, uh, I'm advice uh, because of belly. And you need to really good warm up your hip because of um, like for the future. Uh, gymnastic because of uh, gymnastic uh, like sports dancers like. Uh, they, they, are, they are not so um, short career, they have uh, like till 20 years, but uh, many dancer they can then still 50. If you start uh, healthy, warm up the hip, warm up uh, uh, joint, and then you start slowly stretching, then you become a uh, flexibility higher and higher. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Could you show us some stretches that you would do? Growing up, for the uh, like for beginning, I would just start like uh, just warm up uh, the joints, like a bit the uh, round the hip, like that. Then you stretch the more possible to yourself. Then you push the hip more in this way. Then you stretch like that. Mm -hmm. So this is you get to warm the hip. Mm -hmm. So when you get the warm, then you start to open the leg, and then you start the length, and stretch more out turn, that you have a, open the leg, and then you build your muscle. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. That's. I think that's interesting. I think for for many dancers out there, you just go into splits. So you are saying, be careful, build it up, slowly warm up before you actually go into splits and the likes. That's. Yes, you build like every day, you get a bit more and more flexibility. And if you take care about your hip, about your flexible, then you, you will see a result like every day. You, you will see how easy it will be to sit on the screen. Okay. Part. So, best you, you just start simple, warm up, mm -hmm. then you, you do legs like that, like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More uh, attention you push like this way, it's more stretched. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, I think, and that's another one I think that's important to know for those that are not immediately flexible. You said something that, that's actually quite interesting to me. You said, okay, go patience step by step by step. So I think that's very important. And for those impatient ones, that's that's even more important because otherwise they probably pull something. Yeah. So, Be careful. <laughs> don't try at home. Don't try and don't sit. And and you can do higher. Like you, you put it some under feet, higher position, then you put it higher, higher, and then you sit on the chair and then you play like, like a stretching. Mm -hmm. But it's a... Uh, uh, I think it's uh, our level if you want really get to flexibility. But I think if you, flexibility it's easy to get, but to hold the legs it's different. So I think it's more important to build the muscle to hold the leg, to be careful with your hip. Because so easy, I had a problem so I had an injury with my hip because uh, I was losing my joint. So it must be take care about how to build muscle. Mm -hmm. Great. So you're saying there needs to be a balance. I think that's that's very good advice. Now, so there is stretching like this that made you a very spectacular dancer, very complete dancer. You can turn, you can jump, but you can do everything also with high legs, split jumps. So this is very interesting, I think. Another one I think that's very important is you are having to recover all the time. You have an amazing load of performances because you're performing with two of the best companies in the world, which is Berlin and the Royal Opera in, in London. So that's a lot of strain on your body. Not only do you have to perform more than most classical ballet dancers, but you also have to recover because you're traveling in between back and forth. So I think what would be interesting also to know how do you cope with that, which is a lot? What kind of stretches do you do for recovery? Uh, normally after performance, your body is like very tight and very tired. So important for the same, good warm up with breathing and more stretchable. Like this stuff, like going and you stretch big muscles, stretching this way, you stretch this muscle. So uh, more this stretches soft with breathing and you feel your body and then you you recover fast. And of course uh, important because I fly a lot and important for me to have a tie very hard, like a very uh, tie because of flying. And when you fly you get um, swallow feet and swallow muscle. And uh, thank, thank you for this time, Sarene time. <laughs> you, <laughs> you can fly and you have a very uh, tight leg, so you, I can arrive and immediately go on stage because of uh, everything holding, mm. like uh, circulation holding. Yeah, that's great. Actually, let me tell you a story that you don't know from our side because we love Jana Salenko. You're so authentic. You're such a good, truly good person. And so we love you. And I mean, we, we have been working on this for a while and you have been giving a lot of input into this whole process and into the tights. 
And when we actually got your Facebook message this one day when you were flying back from New York saying, I love these types, you, you can't imagine the whole team was raving. We were so happy when you texted us this. So yeah, thank you so much for this positive feedback. So yeah, we do we have been working a lot on those Z3 uh, recovery types, and and hopefully a lot of people out there will appreciate what they can do to your body. Um, I will I will briefly explain a little bit more about those. Let me just ask you one last question because I think this could be interesting also for people out there. When you recover, is there any anything else? So you use recovery tights. Is do you use icing, warm? What what other ingredients are are to be used to recover faster? I love bath. I love like after performance, I go and just relax. It's I think it's the best of recovering just to take a bath. And sometimes the next day, and I, I love sauna. I love ice. So everything for the body uh, completely good, I do. Mm -hmm. uh, and everything <laughs> what's make me happy. Mm -hmm. Great. Now, one of our types, so what we discussed also, I mean, you're on board for a long time and have been giving input. And so our concept was that we have three different types, right? Mm -hmm. And because we say, well, a dancer's life is always different. You have, in a rehearsal, you have a lot of repetition and movement over and over the same. So you need to have different aspects in your tight also than you need for performance, where you want to be a little more free, but you still also want the tight to support that the blood flows back to the heart faster, which we did through a certain way of compressing, as well as looking impeccable, which is where you also came in, you said, look, this is the kind of scene that you need to use, guys. And we used it, we incorporated it into the tights. We told a lot of dancers out there, look, check out these tights, and they all love the scene. Mm -hmm. So, and then, and then at the end of the day, you're going home, or in your case, you're flying a lot, and so you need to recover. So these stages in a dancer's life are very different, and they all need to be thought about thoroughly. And we did in terms of design, and we did in terms of uh, bioengineering, so the, the biological aspect of how does your body work and how can we support it with these tights. Now, last not least, what we incorporated into these tights is we, because a lot of, actually a lot of dancers, we did a survey with 300 dancers, and one of the aspects that dancers said was not tackled in their tights was we are always making holes in our tights for the toes or for the, for the heel, but there's no tight that wouldn't run. Can you tackle this? And we did. We found a way of, of creating a tight that, that is able to cope with, with it. And, yeah, and I, I would be interested to understand how are you cutting your tights? I think eventually every girl will make this experience. Maybe as little dancer, they don't cut their tights, but eventually they will. And maybe you could give a tip and could explain why you're cutting the tights the way you're cutting them. Okay. Normally, I, uh, I'm not a big fan of cut uh, tights for the show because it's uh, uh, really cutting uh, lines. So mm -hmm. I, I prefer to not cut for the show and put it frozen. And uh, this time I got uh, thinking that because of point shoes, mm -hmm. and, uh, if it's not cutting, and then inside of point shoes, your feet start to, to lose, and you don't feel like the shoes. And mm -hmm. this time I got uh, to, to use like that, that you cut the uh, fingers, and then you feel more shoes. And uh, heel because of not uh, come down point shoes. Mm -hmm. so this is uh, for the rehearsal, I found it, the way to cut. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. I think that's all for now. Um, this, was, this was great. I think a lot of dancers out there got a lot out of this. And maybe just one last story, because we're going to do this frequently now. And next time we want to talk about pirates, which you also are good at. And we asked you if you would have some footage for us, and you literally just busted out some periods 
on the go, so to speak, and they were amazing, and they are also being used now on social media. We, we thought it would take longer to get stuff, but you literally just got back with these spirits, so that was amazing. So for people out there to understand how you think about purettes, how you build them for yourself, and give some tips and tricks, you will need to tune in next time. Next time you're also able to have your questions being incorporated into our broadcast. So if you ask Zarelli, look, I would like Jana to explain a certain thing about purettes, maybe not even about purettes, please send it to our Zarelli social media accounts and we will answer it in this broadcast. So thank you so much, Jana. Thank you so much, everybody who was watching and talk to you soon. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ciao. Ciao.